The things that you go through Seems nobody goes with you Your life's feeling kind of dry And you're just a crane, get your high Again, for Pastor Bobby today. Please continue to pray for Pastor Bobby, First Lady Grace, and Oak City Church family. Your prayers are working, and we do appreciate your prayers. Today, we will hear the word of the Lord coming from our youth pastor, Pastor Jonathan Bates. There you go. Thank you for joining us today at Oak City Church. We're so happy you decided to spend your Sunday morning with us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for giving us another week. Thank you for God for waking us up this morning. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to become more like you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 9, uh, verse 57. And it reads, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee but let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow, looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. The convenience in our culture and our society is something that is actually not normal. I mean, we, we live in an extremely rich culture, hunger is almost a foreign concept to most of us. And, and unfortunately, that is not the norm of most of the world. As believers, we are called to deny ourselves and take up our cross, take up our cross and follow the Lord, which involves sacrifice and denying ourselves. And here, it's interesting that there are several objections um, to following Jesus. And Jesus' ultimately, ultimate conclusion is that no man who, who, ha who has put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. There will always be obstacles in our way. There will always be reasons to wait another day to follow the Lord. Maybe we're not in the moral place that we want to be. Maybe our money isn't right. Maybe we should dedicate a few more years to some pursuit that's in our mind. But I want you to know that if you choose these paths, you're coming up short. Because nothing's more valuable than your relationship with God. Nothing's more valuable than following the Lord Jesus Christ. The first individual says, I want to follow you, Lord. I'll go wherever you go. And Jesus says, check this out. Foxes have holes and birds have nests. But, but I don't have anywhere to lay my head tonight. Are you willing to be homeless for me? 
I mean, we really paint this picture in our society uh, of following Jesus as this, uh, you know, almost like it's a, a scheme for wealth and, and notoriety. I mean, it, it's just, it's really weird the way we, we frame this picture when Jesus says it's, it's, it's a you know, one way ticket in this instance to homelessness. Oh yeah, there's sacrifices here. Another man, a very legitimate excuse, said he had to go bury his father and scholars don't know whether his father had, was already dead and, and he had to go bury him or if his father was on his deathbed. Either case, it would have been perfectly legitimate in my finite understanding for him to go and bury his father. But, but, but it's not about the legitimacy of the burial of his father, but the priority of the will and the word of God because the priority of God should be so high in our hearts and our minds that any excuse, any excuse, regardless of how valid, regardless of how uh, urgent, is less urgent than our desire to serve God and our desire to, to do all that God has called us to do. I want you to know today that, that the, the Holy Spirit that God is speaking to our hearts today. And, and I think that we have excuses in our mind. We might have excuses why we haven't, uh, you know, been given to the poor. And even though a small amount like, you know, $10 a month <laughs> could feed a family in some places, we, we, we would rather, you know, spend $10 a month on, you know, supersizing our, you know, McDonald's meals or whatever we do. Like, like our waste could save lives. <laughs> there are villages in the world where kids don't have, you know, they die of diarrhea. They die of, 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 of ailments that, that, that it takes us one or two days to get over because we have medicine, we have clean water, and they don't. And yet, many of us aren't willing to convenience ourselves for one second, certainly not for them, and certainly not for the kingdom of God. Following Jesus the right way involves inconvenience. It involves prioritizing God's stuff over our stuff. And sometimes in the midst of all that, we lose some of our stuff. Sometimes in the midst of all that, we lose wealth. Sometimes we lose health. Ask the Apostle Paul. Sometimes we lose our very lives. As the apostles. But this is a sacrifice that, that we as believers of God's holy word, as ambassadors of the kingdom of God, have to be willing to make. Because no man that puts his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We have to find a way to look forward. We have to find a way to march ahead. We have to find a way to, to press forth the kingdom of God. And unfortunately, um, all the excuses in the world is not going to change that. Because one day we're going to sit face to face with him. We're going to be face to face with the Lord. And I don't think he's going to, you know, inquire much about you know how much how comfortable our lives was you know how, how, how you know we were able to buy large you know fries when we go to mcdonald's versus you know medium fries or something like that i think that it's going to be you know more about like what we poured out and isn't that the example he gave i mean he came from heaven let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being found in the form of God, 
thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant who was made in the likeness of men. And having found himself in fashion as a man, he humbled himself unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When we look at that, when we look at what Jesus has done, I mean, he gave up everything to pour out himself for us. He came from heaven above as God came down and embodied himself as a man and didn't just, he wasn't a man, like he wasn't like a king, which still would have been a major disparity from God on earth. He became a servant and died a horrific death. In fact, the Bible says he was marred more than any man for you. Jesus Christ died on a cross. He rose again on the third day for us. What are we willing to lay down for him? Is this a season of sacrifice for you? Are you a believer? Have you put your hand to the plow? Well, let's do all that God has called us to do. You might have something on your heart that God has been speaking to you about. I want to encourage you to go forth. You might have a cause that God has placed on your heart, a, a family that is in need. I want to encourage you to go forth. You might have a, have a lofty job and God's been calling you to ministry. I want to encourage you to deny yourself and go forth. We want to thank you so much for being with us today. God bless and keep you. Until next Sunday. The things that you go through Seems nobody goes with you Your life's feeling kind of dry And you're just a crazy